The term high breaks in bluegrass banjo usually is referring to solos that are played between about frets 7 and 12, much like the solo you just heard me play that was taken from Earl Scruggs' Foggy Mountain Banjo album for Lonesome Road Blues. One of the easiest up-the-neck high breaks to learn is a song called Cumberland Gap, which also appears on that Foggy Mountain Banjo album, and... The tab for it is in Earl Scruggs' book on page 109 in the original edition and page 82 in the new revised edition. The song is playing off of what is referred to as the E minor shape. These three fingers on strings 3, 2, and 1 actually form an E minor chord even though these sounds are being played against a G chord. It's still very close to... This. That's why the E minor is called the relative minor, very close to its cousin G. This is from the second four measure section of the song, and while holding this shape, you do a forward roll, add your pinky to 11 and 10. You will find that when you first try to do this, this is going to try to pull that third finger off its fret. So if that's the case and you just can't get the 11th fret, go ahead and play the 10th fret twice. Still will get the job done. Here's me now playing the second section of Cumberland Gap from Earl Scruggs' version. One, two, three, four. Some people aren't aware that this E minor shape is actually three notes out of a very simple pentatonic scale right here at the seventh fret. G is the root and that note is right there. It's also the fifth string open. You can get entire melodies right out of this simple little scale. Lost all my money but a two dollar bill. The trick then is to put rolls around those notes. One thing that happens a lot playing high breaks is that your melody moves up to string one. As such, you end up doing backward rolls are rolls that you have to make where the first note you hit is the first string. Two dollar bill boys. I chose this song as a demonstration because the entire song can be played just between frets seven and nine. So here I'll play the song and you'll see a scrolling tab go along as you watch me play it. When I finished that solo, I had a tag lick that was up here. We're used to the tag lick being down here. Here it sounds like this. And that allows me to stay in this high position. In subsequent solos, you might want to get back down the neck, and that's where you can have this lick. Here's another common tag lick that takes you from this high position at the 7th and 8th fret down to the open. And you sometimes hear those two tags strung together like that. Once you've learned to play Long Journey Home out of this position, there are numerous other songs that play out of this position as well. Here's a short list of tunes. For example, it takes a worried man to sing the worried song. And while I was praying, somebody touched me. While I was praying, somebody touched me. 
You'll notice when I went up to the C chord, I used fingers one, two, and four, so that when the melody came up to the 10th fret on the second string, I was able to get it with my third finger. Another important concept is to realize that your notes that you're looking for are supported by the three main chords in the key of G, which are G, C, and D, right here in frets 7 through 10. And notice that I'm only worried about strings 3, 2, and 1. That's because high breaks are high breaks. They have the melody up on those high strings. So you don't need to worry about getting the whole chord as you play it. Another thing you'll notice is that I left the first string open quite often, and that's because that's a note from the background G chord, and it will blend in with the notes you're playing. If you're looking for a melody note that's higher than this ninth fret B note, which is in the pentatonic scale in that E minor shape, you're going to be moving up into these positions where you're looking at notes from a D chord between frets 10 and 12, and or the G chord at fret 12, and sometimes you see players play fingers 2 and 3 to get those high notes so that they can also get the 14th fret if needed. That happened in the Lonesome Road Blues earlier. So moving on to a traditional song called Coming Round the Mountain, that melody starts in the same place as Long Journey Home. And then I move up higher. And that note is supported by a D chord right there. So here now I'm playing a high solo to come in around the mountain again with the tab scrolling across the screen. Remember that you can use the YouTube feature to slow down any of these songs as I play them. couple things to share with you that come from Earl's playing is he had a thing called the choke lick and he's bending fret 10 and he would do it with just one finger but I think you run the risk of your finger flying off the strings like what just happened there so I put my second finger down and I got this idea from watching BB King the master of bending notes so I also put my first finger behind the second finger and that helps control it to where my fingers don't come off the string. And in Lonesome Road Blues, he actually does the two bends, leaves it bent, and then comes back and bends it back down. Another sound that you hear Earl play a lot in his high plane is the sound of frets 11 and 12 usually coming after a C chord, so you can use fingers one, two, three. And what that's doing is that's going from a C to the sound of a C7 or 9, giving it a bluesy effect. These two notes also work against a D chord. It becomes an augmented chord against the D. leading to a resolution of G. We hope this video gives you some ideas as to how you can create your own high breaks.